My name is Dr. Varda Chari and I am an orthopedic surgeon. Actually, I, I started medical school, medical college in 1952 in Chennai, in medical college known as Stanley Medical College. And then after I graduated, I was working for some time. Then I did my postgraduate in orthopedics in Delhi University and I took my master's degree in 1966 from Delhi University. I went to United States in 1970. I underwent further training in orthopedics, advanced orthopedics, and then I'm also certified as a specialist by the American Board of Orthopedic Surgery in the United States. That was in 1977. I have been in active practice in United States until then, until I retired in 2001 from active practice in USA. My wife, Chandra Vardachari, also a doctor, she is a pathologist. We got married in 1965. I didn't know her before that and she didn't know me before. And uh, it was kind of arranged marriage. And uh, then both of us were practicing there. And then after, nine, after 2000, in fact 1999, our life changed. Could you tell us how? How? That's a very interesting question. See, right from the beginning, I always have an inclination for social service. Even as a student, medical student, myself along with a friend of mine who is now a very famous neurosurgeon in Chennai, he is also retired from practice. Both of us used to go to villages and do survey of the villages for the prevalence of leprosy. It's a very, so it's, a, it's a disease with social stigma, unfortunate. There is no need for that stigma. And uh, then it is treatable if detected early. But many, are, it's a poor man's disease because it is in very poor hygiene and in overcrowded atmosphere where in one small thatched home about 10 people or 15 people sleep. If one person gets leprosy, others get it too. It doesn't come by just touching you, it comes by prolonged contact. And that's how they get it. So we thought by doing, by examining these villages, if we can detect those which is very obvious disease with the grotesque deformity, everyone knows what it is. But in early stages, they do not know whether it is there or not. So, if you detect the, the disease very early on, then you can treat them and cure the disease before it, uh, it creates havoc on the individual. So, by Swami's grace, we were successful in detecting very many early cases. And once we detect them, there was a clinic in Saidapet, a division in Madras, and there, there was a leprosy clinic. And uh, anybody who treats leprosy should be totally dedicated. He should not be after money, because he cannot get much money, it's a poor man's disease. And you must have a commitment for such people. We had one such wonderful person called Dr. Ramanujam, who was in charge of the leprosy clinic. We used to send patients to them, and he will treat them. And that's how it started. But later on, after I uh, graduated from the medical school, I was still in Madras for a few more years. During that period, me along with a couple of our friends used to go to a village near Madras. It was outside of Madras then, I believe now it is part of the city itself. And there, every Sunday, we used to run a clinic, free clinic, we dispense medicine. We were doing it as long as I was in Madras. So this is how my life in this level started. And then I was lost into my practice and all that after I went to the United States and the material, so-called material world. Then, and uh, when I was about to retire, and when I was, I planned to retire when I was 65 years old. I'm a surgeon, but you get burnt out after some time. So then we have done enough of all these things and so when I was about 
reaching 65 then i was a chief of staff in my hospital then and uh, i informed them that i am going to give a practice there active practice when i am 65 years old but why then what are you going to do after retiring when you have been so active so what we planned to do was to travel all around the world go to third third world countries spend about 2 weeks or so there and do some free orthopedic work and uh, then at the same time we can also see the different parts of the world this what we decided the interesting happen thing happened this was in 1997 i believe it is then when i was thinking about it planning for my retirement someone told me that there is a hospital in puttaparthi it is called sai baba's hospital and sai baba has started that hospital they do free open heart surgeries then i was thinking if they do free open heart surgeries in that hospital why should i travel all over the world let me go there and do what i want to do in different countries all i need is a place to stay and some food to eat so i don't want any money this is what i thought i expressed this to a very close friend of mine a couple a the very well known couple a very big industrialist and very close to swami he is like my son i mentioned it to him so i am interested in going to puttaparthi and looking at the place then he told me both husband and wife they will take me to puttaparthi so that is how the puttaparthi came into my being and interestingly about a few years earlier we had an opportunity to come to puttaparthi but since we did not know anything about swami and we were not much into swami we ignored that this opportunity was sometime in 93 or so my wife's sister his son swami said he will perform the wedding in swami's room and uh, swami said you come with a few people then we'll perform the wedding so my wife's sister my sister in law called me called us and then said swami is going to perform the wedding of our son we want both of us to come there and hardly one week notice was given and uh, there was no way we could come in one week making arrangements to cover for our practice and all that so we didn't come so we missed that opportunity so but anyway then it uh, it 99 november actually the date it was a thursday november 11th i i looked up the date because i was referring to various thing recently for some other reason so that's why i remember the date now so 11th of uh, november 1999 soon after the deepavali then i was coming here for a wedding to chennai i told my friends that i am ready to come to puttaparthi now and i would like to see the hospital they brought me here i arrived on thursday what i saw was really amazing i i came here to see the hospital and i had no other interest in coming here not swami at that time so with that intention i came here in 1999 brought by them and uh, first myself and uh, one of his relatives his sister both of us came together and i didn't know anything about this place we were given accommodation in santi bhavan and uh, i was brought in that day the very first day and i was seated in the veranda just under the window where previously the vice chancellors used to sit that's where they seated me and uh, i saw swami for the first time in my life coming and gliding so beautifully from there it was stunning and i didn't know what to expect and i didn't know how swami will look like he will be frightening he will be intimidating and when i saw him coming so smoothly and creating vibhuti for some people taking letters i have never seen anything like that he slowly came up to the veranda and walked through that came up to the upper veranda he was coming from the rear towards me as he was passing by me he didn't look at me and i was 
standing and watching him. It was all very exciting. And the next day, my friends, both the husband and wife arrived. That was Friday. And uh, what they did was, then since my interest was coming to the hospital, I was brought to the super speciality. And I was brought to the director's room. And uh, I didn't know anybody here at that time. And one of Swami's students or one of the uh, people who work here, I don't know who it was, he was asked to take me around the entire hospital, which he did. And uh, I saw that there was no orthopedics. I was kind of disappointed. And I said, maybe this is my first and last visit to Puttaparthi. That's what I thought. But Swami's plans are different. I didn't know that. So then next day, Saturday morning, and uh, sitting there, I was, everything was so thrilling. And I was, I took a walk around this place. A lot of construction was going on in the area where there is the new shopping center. So all were there. And uh, then the next day, Saturday morning, about 9, 9 8.30 or 8 o'clock, Swami came. And uh, as he went inside the interview room, I was bending down my head and then maybe I was meditating as what I was doing. I was not paying any attention. So my friend who was responsible for bringing me here suddenly said, Doctor, get up, get up. Swami calls you. And there was an interview. And it was amazing what was going, what went on in that room. Sir, uh, what was the first uh, impression about Swami you had when he walked towards you? My first impression was, first it was blank. And secondly, this is something I have not seen before. Who is this person? He doesn't look like a human being. What is happening here? Why am I so spellbound? I had no explanation for that. When we entered the interview room, in the interview room, it was myself, my friend and his wife, both of them very close to me, and their son, he was very young at the time, and there was some other couple from Punjab. These were the only people there. And uh, I saw Swami sitting in his asanam, on that corner of the interview room. I sat directly in front of him. And, uh, and there's another door there near that, I sat there. And uh, Swami was just talking with few things and then he looked at me and uh, then he asked for my name. What's your name? Then I mentioned my name. And uh, oh, what do you, oh, what do you do then? He said, I'm a doctor, Swami. Then he said, I like doctors. What do you want to do? That was the first thing that struck me. That's exactly what was in my mind. What am I going to do after I take retirement? And he said, what do you want to do? He pulled the thing out of my mind. And then I, I, I didn't even know how to address him. Sir, Swami, I didn't know. I didn't address him by anything. So then uh, I said, uh, I would like to come and work in a hospital such as his. Then he feigned as if he didn't hear anything. He asked again, what? Then. I repeated that. Then he asked, he told me to come to him. Come here. He asked me close to him. I kneeled before him. And uh, I did not know anything about Pada Namaskar or whatever. <laughs> that was a wonderful opportunity because I kneeled before him, in front of him, there. He created a ring. Then he showed the ring to the people who were sitting there. What do you see there? They said, Swami, there the three diamond Swami. Then he showed it to me. Then he asked me, do you want this? Or do you want a Navaratna ring? I never knew any of this materialization before. And I did not understand anything. What is all this? So I said, I don't know. Whatever pleases you. So that's what I said. He said, I'm going to give you a Navaratna ring. He may close the ring hand, if I recall correctly, and when he opened it, the diamond ring was not there, the Navaratna ring was there. And he asked me to show my right hand, and he put it 
in my ring finger and then some conversation with the people who were there and then he asked me to go inside the room that is another thing that struck me because when he went inside the room um he i didn't remember any chairs in that room at that time in the in the, in the other the subsequent interviews i saw the chair but on that interview i did not see at least i don't remember to have seen any chairs swami was standing then he came to me and then there was one other person in the private interview room along with me and after talking to that person then he came to me started talking to me and uh, generally about i i suppose he discussed about i don't remember all the full conversation there but finally in the end he asked me how is your health i said i am fine he said no you are not fine you have stomach problems then he rubbed my he rubbed with his hand from my chin all the way down to my lower abdomen three times and then he said now you are fine what does that mean when I, when i came out i was dazed the thing what was my mind i didn't talk when well, we were all walking back to shanti bhavan while we were walking back i did not talk about anything then the conversation started near the south indian canteen and then i was mentioning how i feel about it and then i told them i feel sad that my wife is not here with me at the time they also felt the same way swami brought me into this along with my wife gradually into this so that probably you can call it maybe the firm foundation so that's what i could maybe i'll call that i can mention it like that two things happened number one we were asked to participate in this medical camp and uh, then initially we were not ready for it because we had other plans still we had not come into this world fully yet so we were still in the other world where we have been all these years but finally it made us come to this place we came to general hospital where swami's philosophy was being practiced our medical camp was stationed there we started seeing it we all come from western countries with some ideas about different things we saw a totally a different type of attitude practice and everything number 1 the patients were totally innocent ignorant and they were even practicing some kind of practices which is not acceptable anywhere for example putting uh, what do you call that burn burning as part of the treatment in the villages in a child we saw that too but at the same time we also saw but that is from ignorance then we can teach them but we believe our philosophy was to believe that you see the patient whatever the diagnosis you make you give the medicine and you treat them and then the medicine also has to be given in certain doses one doctor who cannot hear was seeing patients but by just touching without even knowing what the symptoms were the patients were cured he is just touching that is an amazing thing and he has been here for a long 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 time and then other thing i noticed it everyone is given swami's vibhuti then later on i came to realize it is not the medicine that we are giving he is curing these patients it is the vibhuti that goes along with that so there is something beyond the medicine that cures it and that's obvious it is swami's power sir uh, please tell us how swami inspired you to uh, be an instrument in starting the orthopedics department in this hospital the the, the orthopedic department the way it started itself is very interesting uh, i was a new kid in the block at that time there has been veterans and i have myself been giving because one of the reasons i was brought in here is probably with the view of my wife was brought in here for 
pathology and i was brought in here the possibility of an orthopedic department possibility but nothing existed then that being the case i used to be giving letters to swami about starting orthopedics and swami will always take that letter which i gave but he will not respond to that so nothing was happening for four or five years that is from 2000 until 2005 then couple of things happened which was flabbergasting there was in the, i was I, i used to come only for guru purnima and for um uh, birthday for the medical camps and we used to work in the general hospital in 2005 when i had come for guru purnima i was asked to see a patient in the general hospital this patient had a very bad broken thigh bone called the femur it's markedly displaced and in very poor general medical condition she had severe cerebral palsy and multiple bed sores and uh, not fit for any kind of surgery and that was the situation so when i saw this patient with all these bed sores there were only two options either you operate or you don't operate if you operate the the complications there's the risk of developing complications which itself can finish the patient is high operative mortality if you don't operate not being able to nurse her not being able to turn around and things like that because of such severe pain she will have a miserable life and that itself will finish her so either way it's a problem 5 days later I got a phone call and I was told that Swami wants this patient to be operated here and I have to do the surgery. The, within three days or so, whatever instruments I was able to get, which is not all the thing that I needed, I did the surgery. It is 15 years since I, now 2005, I'm 10 years now. I saw that patient even day before yesterday in her home. what is amazing is no bed sores all the bed sores have healed and the fracture has solidly healed the implant that i put in to stabilize the fracture at that time which i did not expect to stay long is still there and i prayed to swami i don't know what i am doing here you please help me swami or you do the surgery swami it's obvious who did the surgery 3 4 months later i got a phone call that swami has approved the department of orthopedics you have to come and start organizing dr safia called me and he said i am appointing you as officer in charge of orthopedics special officer you come here we'll provide all the necessary equipment and that's how it started and i will tell you one other thing also that is after we started the orthopedic department at the end of one year we brought out a souvenir in commemoration of the first year of that i wanted to place the first copy at the lotus feet and swami took that copy with him and uh, within a few minutes the bhajan everything was over then he left and uh, then i know uh, then either i noticed or somebody told them that swami took the copy along with him about 45 minutes later about 7 pm i was called by one of the trustees who was with swami in that room he told me that swami read the whole book from page 1 to the last until he finished it he didn't put it down and he also told me the statistics that i had put in in that book which stated one year in that one year the number of patients seen was somewhere about 28000 number of surgeries done major surgeries not minor surgeries the major surgeries done was about 1800 in one year then swami commented i believe look at this they have done they have in this hospital in in our hospitals they have seen so many patients they have operated this number of patients all these patients where will they go they will break their bones 
and lie uncared for without any help now they can come to a place where they can get the best treatment possible anywhere at no cost this is from his love these are a few of the testimony to prove what more do you need to come here or be accepted that there are many many more instances like this <laughs>